Nate breaks ground on its new Spruce Grove campus. What we're starting today will have a great impact on Nate, on Spruce Grove, and in fact on all of Alberta. Edmontonians gather in the hundreds to mourn tragedies in France and Beirut. This was an opportunity to come and uh, let people know that there are global citizens in our city. The battle against cancer continues as the Alberta government invests millions. It's extremely important to Albertans facing cancer. Hello and welcome to Second Edition News. Spruce Grove will soon be going with crane and hoist apprentices as Nate's new campus is underway. There is a growing need for crane operators in Alberta and with the new campus being built, it will allow Nate to expand this apprentice program. One more shot. <laughs> Crane operators work in many different industries, including the oil and gas sector, construction, and many more. What we're starting today will have a great impact on Nate, on Spruce Grove, and in fact, on all of Alberta. Demand for Nate education has never been higher. On average, we receive more than four applications for every available space we have. We need to grow to allow more people to uh, access polytechnic education. The Spruce Grove campus will be able to provide room to accommodate any other NAEP programs that may require more space than what the main campus can supply. A candlelight vigil honoring victims of the Paris and Beirut terrorist attacks was held in our city this past Monday. Making me compassionate, relaxed and kind. Aware of the many blessings I have each day. There was standing room only as people gathered to not only mourn the victims but to show strength as a community. MP Randy Boissonneau organized and hosted the event. This was an opportunity for folks in Edmonton, uh, Francophones, Francophiles, just people in general to come and uh, let people know that there are global citizens in our city and that uh, we stand up for democracy, we stand for peace and that we stand for living in societies that welcome people from, from all parts of the world. Over a hundred people attended the vigil and after a brief presentation, candles were lit for a moment of silence, followed by the singing of O Canada. The Alberta Cancer Foundation invests $3 million into colorectal cancer research at the Cross Cancer Institute. The new research will prevent tumors from being able to repair themselves after radiation treatment. This will increase the chance of success for patients facing this disease. So the research that we announced today actually will help us better treat those cancers and make them more effective. Colorectal cancer doesn't often show signs or symptoms early on. By 2017, an estimated 2,500 Albertans will be diagnosed with the disease and approximately one-third will die. Having above zero temperatures in November isn't usually a bad thing, but for one Edmonton business, it's been a little too warm for comfort. Due to very challenging snowmaking conditions, Snow Valley will not have enough snow to offer quality lessons at this Unusually warm temperatures have prevented Snow Valley crews from being able to manufacture enough snow to be able to open on time. This means they've had to cancel their first week of lessons and operation to the public. It's normal for us to open before there's actually natural snow out in Edmonton as long as it's cold enough for us to make our own snow here and uh, it just hasn't been cold enough. To make the snow, crews need temperatures of at least minus five degrees, which usually requires them to work overnight. Since there's only been a handful of workable nights, it's estimated that only a third of the snow needed has been made. The Star Wars franchise is set to make some major releases over the next month. Nate students had the opportunity to demo Star Wars Battlefront, one of the most anticipated games of 2015. Oh, the demo was set up by the digital media and IT program at Nate. It showcases some of the worlds that students can create in the game development. Uh, how to create a game from start to finish. And some of our students go on and work for some of the big gaming companies. So what's interesting about it is the, uh, the environments that we would create in class would be sort of like the same environments that we'd create with dice. The successful demo helped inform Nate students of what exactly goes on in the digital media program. The Shine Lifestyle and Yoga Festival took place this past weekend, which included two days packed with classes, workshops, and talks on wellness and self-development. The festival allows individuals to explore the nature of consciousness and expanding possibility through inspiration, growth, and community. We're offering a platform for community leaders to share their information and uh, resources and knowledge on health and wellness and sustainability. 
Whether you are stressed from school, work, or your personal life, the Shine Festival encourages everyone to come together and connect with like-minded individuals. There are also many resources provided on how you can successfully add wellness and positivity into your life. The Ooks women's basketball team has been doing very well this season. That's true, but I heard Lakeland College gave them quite a run for their money on the weekend. Isn't that right, Fairyel? That's right, and we have that and more coming up for you in sports. The ladies went into their home and home with the Lakeland wrestlers expecting a challenge. Both teams were undefeated going into the matchup, but they couldn't both lead that way. Ooks veteran Tori Hill went into the game leading the league in free throws. She definitely had an impact on the game, muscling around a Lakeland defender here and scoring the layup to open the scoring. Shortly after, Jordan Enns dishes to Nicole Reptesh who shoots for three and puts the Ooks up by five. They didn't hold the lead for long though. In the second quarter, the La with Lakeland up by four, Cameo McCurley drains a three of her own pudding. Later in the second, Sydney Hurlbrow plays some string music of her own and the Ooks are up once again. The two teams ended a seesaw first half with 28 points apiece. Halftime, of course, always a good chance to check the news feed and maybe deal with some pocket lint. Lakeland really began to take charge in the second half. Early in the third quarter, McCurley scores a three to put the wrestlers up by six. She was deadly from the three-point line and finished with a game-high 21 points. The three-pointers were really what made the difference for Lakeland in the game. They counted for almost half of the wrestlers' points. Tory Hill wasn't able to rally the girls as the rushless pulled away. The Ooks dropped their first game of the season on Friday night, while Lakeland stayed undefeated. Tory Hill finishes the matchup with 16 points and hopes her team can take the loss in stride. Yeah, take away the loss, like it was a hard loss, but it was still a good loss. Every team loses. We're just gonna become more of a team now. I think the loss made us more of a team, and we're just gonna work harder on our next game. Nate's men hockey team took on Concordia Thunder this past Saturday. The Ooks score early in the first period to start off the game as Kevin Carthy feeds Trace Elson the puck to get it past Concordia's goalie Hadfield. The Ooks lead 1-0. Halfway through the first, Ooks captain Scott Fellinermeyer snaps a puck past Hadfield and scores his 10th of the season. The Ooks now lead 3-0. Later in the first, Concordia Thunder strikes back on a goal from Philippe Cadana. Concordia is on the board. Tyler Stevenson sneaks a pass from Nathan Smith to score another for the Thunder before the time expires. However, if that's not enough, as the Ooks have a 3-2 lead over Concordia ending the first. Into the second, the two teams find themselves in trouble as Ooks defenseman Tyler Jaworski cross-checks Concordia's forward Nathan Smith, leading to an exchange, and both of them end up in the penalty box for roughing. Thunder goes on to score one, the second ends in a 3-3 tie. Moving on to the third, Ooks defenseman Sam Waterfield suffered a nosebleed after getting a puck to the face. He day later returned to finish the game. Ooks forward John Dunbar takes back the lead, scoring seven minutes into the period. Captain Fellinermeyer strips the opponent, starts up the middle on an end-to-end -end rush, dancing through the Concordia defense before eventually finishing off the highly real goal for a second of the night. The Ooks go on to score four more times, ending the game with a 9-4 victory. The Ooks remain undefeated. Nate's next game is a doubleheader against Briarcrest this Friday. Scott Fellinermeyer, who won player of the game, spoke about the win. We got through some adversity. I mean, we've had a lot of games this year that have been, uh, you know, four or five goal games. So when it was ni it got nice and close there and challenged us to stick to our structure and play good in the third. The Eskimos kick off against the Calgary Stampeders on Sunday to compete for a playoff berth in the Grey Cup Finals. While waiting out their bye into the Western Conference Finals this past weekend, the team held an open scrimmage to help remain in game shape. Thank you all for coming out. Fans, young and old, came out to take in the Saturday morning practice, which included a meet and greet and autograph signing with the team. You guys are that good. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> On the field, the no contact scrimmage simulated game day scenarios. Quarterback Mike Riley hopes it will help the team stay focused until they meet with the Stamps. Just try to make uh, you know up the competition a little bit, make it a little different than a normal practice because we compete all day, every day in normal practices. So we tried to make it a little bit a little bit more high tempo. Sunday's game starts at 2.30 at Commonwealth Stadium. Wow, the Eskimos are looking really good. Are you guys going to be checking out the game? I'll definitely be checking it out this weekend. I guess we'll see you guys there then. That's been your second edition news. Thank you for watching.
Welcome to Cooking with Ernest. My name is Steve Watkins, and I'm here with the always talented Chef Dan. He's going to make some simple and delicious mussels that you can prepare for yourself right in your very own home. Chef, how are we going to be going about that? Uh, we're going to start with some bacon, actually. So we're just going to take some double smoked bacon. Excellent. Everybody loves bacon. It makes yeah. everything better. Uh, we're going to chop it up nicely like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to pop it in our pan with a little bit of butter. And Do you use margarine too or oil or butter is just better? I like butter because it just tastes better. It mm -hmm. just works better with the mussels. And there we got some shallots going into the, going to the mix? Yeah, shallots. Uh, you can use green onion, white onion, red onion, and some garlic. These are just like our little flavor base to it. It's like the holy trinity of flavor right there. Basically. So we're going to let that render off sh shortly and we'll talk mm -hmm. about our mussels here. Oh, excellent. So like all, like most shellfish, these little guys are alive at the moment, right? Correct. These are alive. So as they're closed like this, mm -hmm. they're definitely alive. They're living. Um, you'll have to always clean your mussels when you get them from the store. So make sure there's no debris on the outside, make sure there's no sand. There's usually a little beard mm -hmm. thing on here, which is just seaweed that gets stuck inside the mussels. So you pull that out and then you're ready to go. So these have been pre-cleaned, so we're gonna just throw them in. So in order to be steaming them today in that pan there, right? Yes, we are. We're just gonna add our liquid, which is our apple cider, uh, our apple champagne, sparkling champagne. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna add a little bit of cream. Excellent. Probably not too much, don't want it to be too fattening, right? No, you don't want it too fattening. And we're gonna cover it, bring it back up to uh, a boil, and this will take about like 20, 30 seconds at least. So what's the best way to tell that your muscles are done? Basically, your muscles will open completely. So uh, like wide, right open? Correct. Uh, any muscles that do not open when you're cooking them, do not eat them, just discard them, make sure no one eats them. Just because of Muscles have a natural thing that when they're done, they open up for you. They show their beautiful, lovely meaty mm -hmm. flesh in the middle. And it's just it's just a safety precaution. Well, it's a good thing to know. Oh, chef, those look absolutely delicious. So um, what are other things that you could kind of serve with these muscles to make um, them better? We definitely could serve serve like a, a bread of some sort or some crackers to soak up all the liquid. Awesome. Well, Chef, thanks for being with us. If you'd like to know more recipes like this, please go to natenewswatch.ca and click on the second edition tab. Again, Chef, thanks for being with us.